Hello and welcome to the Digital Marketing Podcast, brought to you by TargetInternet.com. Hello and welcome back to the Digital Marketing Podcast. My name is Kieran Rogers and today I'm joined with Dashan Hamza from The Worst Kept Secret. Hello Dashan. Hey Kieran, how you doing? I'm all right. Dashan, I really want to talk to you about, we're going to be talking today about social media management and Absolutely. I've asked you for kind of five key areas where okay. businesses get it wrong. But before we do that, yep. just give us a little bit of background into who you are and, and what you do. Okay, so you said the name perfectly right. It's Dashan, Dashan Hamza. The background to what I do is simply apply what we call a digital lens over any organization's business. And the reason I can do that is before I got into digital, I spent about 15 years working as a client in mainly brand, product, P&L positions, but running a P&L, being responsible for customer experience, responsible for channels, responsible for sales across a range of industries. So a couple of things for me, it's all about profitable growth and innovation. Digital for me sits on top of that. So for the last four or five years, I've been involved with two digital ventures, but primarily in the UK with The Worst Kept Secret. So tell us about The Worst Kept Secret. Who, who are they? What do they do? What is The Worst Kept Secret? Um, <laughs> That's a good question. It's a great name, particularly given that we're a social media agency, and in the world of social media, there are no secrets now. I mean, what goes on tour goes on Facebook or goes on YouTube. So all secrets are The Worst Kept Secret. They're out there. Ah, I see. That's a play on the name, but yeah. more importantly for an organisation... We try and make social media as simple as possible. There are a lot of people out there who are talking about it and trying to complicate it. Mm. We are not ninjas, we're not Jedis, we're just normal business people who understand business challenges, business objectives, and we put a digital and social lens across it. So we come out with social media plans in three areas to build capability, mm -hmm. training, to address strategy, strategy consulting, obviously, mm -hmm. and finally to deliver some of that through online community management. That is what we do, and because we keep it simple, it is the worst kept secret that you need to share. <laughs> so, so no complex buzzwords or ah, you know, no, no, it's it's simple. I don't, I, I'm I'm feeling you know a really complex diagram to really confuse everybody. Might might be we can do two by two matrices, <laughs> but anything more than that or five step models will be in business school speak. No, it really is that simple because a lot of people try and make social media difficult. They do, but really it's just another channel for an organisation, be it public sector, private sector, B two B, B two C to achieve their objectives. It's a communication channel, and it's, it's two-way. It can be communication, but yet it can help build products, it can help investor relations, and it's one of the five pillars we'll talk about, I'll show you, it stretches right across business. It's not just the home for marketing. Fantastic, well, let's get started. This, what would you say is the number one area where most people go wrong with their social media management? I think the first area is really not articulating the highest level business objectives. So, so let's, let's just break that down. What do you mean by high-level business objectives? So rather than looking at social media as a, a knee-jerk reaction, oh, quote, we need to be on Twitter, <laughs> or why, or a CEO, an MD who has read FT Weekend or the Sunday Times Business Supplement and thinks, I need to get a Facebook presence. Well, why? Step back, articulate the business challenge. Is it, I need to build more profitable sales? Is it, I need to increase advocacy? Is it, I need to reduce churn? articulate the high-level business problems, which they already have through their objectives yeah. and their challenges, and then from that, see if digital can help achieve those objectives and overcome the challenges. So it's qualifying. What do you want to achieve? At a high level, yeah. most people tend to go straight to, I think well, what do you want to do? Earlier, yeah. The communications yeah. aspect, or what do you want to say? Yeah. What do you want to do? Mm. Well, is Twitter the right thing? Or is microblogging the right thing? Am I after thought leadership? Am I after engagement? Am I trying to get real-time insights to aid product development or help my sales force? Step back and articulate the business need. And I think that has to be the number one thing. Clarify the highest level business objectives and challenges. Then understand the potential for digital and social media. And what kind of format is that best put into? We're going to try and keep it simple. <laughs> so it can just be, and it should be, a simple list of objectives and challenges. You do not need complex MBA type diagrams to articulate this. It should be the challenges that a board, a CEO can articulate to the whole of their organisation. Yeah. 
regardless of industry or sector, that those at the core phase, those in call centres, can understand. Okay. What's the next? What's the next thing? I think the next thing is understanding its impact across business. As we said earlier, many people tend to focus on the communications aspect of social media. Yes, it is a form of communication. Oh, I'm guilty of this because that's, that's my main use of, of social media is to communicate. But you can look at it as a way of, you know, when we were younger, I remember in the days of O-levels, you would learn English language, mm -hmm. English literature, and spoken English. You now have digital communication, mm -hmm. and there's a way of communicating, whether it's in 140 characters or less. But please, if you do that, still speak with perfect English and great <laughs> grammar. It's G-R-E-A-T, not G-R-8. Um, like, like I said, if you have the basic structures right, you can then take that and apply it into digital. So as opposed to just having digital and social media sitting within marketing or PR's objectives, yeah. how can it help operations? How can it help any organization be more effective? How can I get real-time insights? So if I know if people are talking about a certain thing, I can reallocate resource quickly before it becomes a critical need. There are many areas of an organization that are touched by social media. It is not just a preserve of PR and marketing. But operations, finance, human resource management, all are touched by it as well. So that's all well and good, but how do you get these people involved with it? Because very often the attitude within a large organisation is, oh, social media, that marketing and PR deal with mm. that, or the expertise and the people that go on the training for it are in the marketing and PR team. So how would you go about encouraging an organisation to break that down and actually get people from the finance team and the operations team actually actively involved with it? Where do you think people go wrong with that? It's very difficult because people tend to take the view that there's got to be an expert, there's got to be one person. Yeah. Um, ultimately, we want all organisations to have digital and social media expertise across the business, across the organisation. So it's not just a preserve of finance or marketing. Yeah. However, to get there, you may need champions. Yeah. Now, we've spoken about this before, where we've talked about chief digital officers or digital directors, and we're seeing, I think, a large number of organizations, certainly in the EU and the US, recruit for these, mm -hmm. even in smaller companies, find a champion for digital. Mm -hmm. Because hopefully that champion would spread the message and be the point person. Mm -hmm. But the overall objective has to be to raise a competency and understanding across the whole organization, be it across function or level. So to achieve that, yes, you can go the route of, of um, appointing somebody to lead, mm -hmm. or where we have worked with organisations, we've gone in at the, the board level with the CEO and the MDs and then worked across their direct reports to mm -hmm. show them the impact that social media has and potentially has in their industry or their organisation so they can see the functional need for it. So the only debate then is where does it sit? How do I train as many people as possible mm -hmm. to raise levels of competency? Because once they've seen the effect on operations objectives, product development objectives, communications objectives, investor relations objectives, HR objectives, particularly with internal comms, mm. then the functional leads can drive that agenda forward. And whether they drive it forward as a board or whether they drive it forward through a champion, the marketing director, the chief digital officer, or the operations director, those models, distinct models, still can work to achieve that goal. And I guess if you started with the you know the organisation's requirements and, and, and needs, this dovetails and fits into that quite nicely, doesn't it? Absolutely. Hence, starting in that order. Yeah. High level objectives, and then pretty soon you'll get down to well, this is what I'm trying to achieve through communications, and that may be the lead channel, or this is what I'm trying to achieve through product development, and that may be the lead channel. I, I think it can be quite refreshing. Let's say you are the considered expert in the marketing or, or PR team to actually broaden your horizons a little bit, take an interest in, you know, well, what do operations <laughs> need to yeah. achieve rather than just looking at a sales sales uh, target or, or, a, or a particular PR campaign. So what do you finance? What's important What's important to them? And it's an exercise I've very often done when you come to an organisation and completely redesign their website. It's really good to get buy-in from, from everybody Absolutely. on that. But it's really interesting. I, yeah, I've never thought about it from a, a social media perspective. You could, you could do exactly the same kind of process with that. And it's a very good way for certain individuals to build impact and influence. There is a debate at the moment about the role of marketing, the value of marketing, and I'm sure we'll talk about ROI soon, yeah. um, and trying to measure 
the effectiveness of your plans to justify investments. Yeah. Now the challenge here is we've always had that. How do you justify any kind of business growth investment? Yeah. And there's rigorous financial analysis from your net present values all the way down to showing visits on a website now or retweets of a post and what may happen when somebody's retweeted a post. However, what you're selling is absolutely spot on. It gives people the opportunity to own digital agenda. So for marketeers that may lack gravitas and not have the levers of P&L, strategy, mm -hmm. customer experience that generally sit with the chief operating officer, the commercial director, the customer experience director, they become more popular as titles now. It may give the marketing director or the PR director the room to show great gravitas and influence mm -hmm. by owning the E agenda and what I'd call E enabling or E enhancing the whole organization because it's a channel in itself that could deliver profitable sales, but it's a channel in itself that could also make each of those functional areas more effective. So it does broaden the influence for a potential lead, and preferably in marketing where I think marketing has to step up its game. So number three, What's the, what's the third thing on your list of, of, of kind of go, avenues people to go, don't go so down, perhaps they should? Once you've done that, you've articulated high-level objectives, you've stretched it across the organisation. Obviously, you want to break that down into the more specific goals and, and plans. And then it comes to resourcing. I think we've all heard of, quote, let's just leave it for the intern. Let's find the youngest <laughs> or the funkiest person. Uh -uh. You, you tweet. Yeah, <laughs> you can do it. it. You can do it. <laughs> and the parallel I give is, would you have an unqualified person on Sky News at 7 o'clock, on the news at 10, on the BBC, explaining what went wrong with your company? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so why are you allowing someone who may not be adequately qualified or yeah. supported yeah. to be representing your company out in the media? A stat I love. This is the... Um, capacity of the O2, I think it's something like 22, 23,000. O2 Arena, yeah. yeah when, it's, when it's full. Yeah. Um, that, that's a vast audience, and mm -hmm. most people wouldn't step out on the stage unprepared sure. in front of an audience like that. But actually, it's quite common for people to you know, quite happily post and, and tweet to, to audiences of that size without, without any real forethought or, or, or planning or, or process to, to check what's been written is, is correct and grammatically right and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, you can inadvertently end up looking like an idiot in front of an O2 arena and, and carry on. Companies quite happily sometimes carry on repeating that, that mistake again and again. It's a great analogy and the only thing is the impact is far greater. <laughs> yeah, so well, yeah, because it's, uh, it's not only the people in the O2 arena, it's everyone else they're connected with. Absolutely, yeah. and if those 22,000 choose to share a bad experience with others, or from the O2 arena it hits the news at 10, you've magnified the impact. Mm -hmm. There are many examples of major blue chip companies and strong brands who should have known better. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to go through them here, but if they had gone through steps one, step two, and you asked about step three, which is adequately resourcing. So making sure you have enough people who are well qualified and understand the audience as well as the business objectives so they can tie them together to have the conversations that happen on social media, you will be in a better place. But to be adequately resourced, you're effectively building another department. So many people ask me about this and ask whether, how can they justify an investment in a space that's so new, such as social media. I just turned the clock back 15 years when the internet was starting up and websites were a big innovation. We had web Jedis in developing <laughs> websites and managing websites. And there are some... The webmaster. The, the webmaster or the webmistress. <laughs> what do we want? To be, um, to be safe and correct. But yeah. we had people running websites, developing websites, and companies not adequately resourcing them internally or externally and recognizing the importance of that channel yeah. and the impact it would have on their customer service on their sales on their overall growth targets mm. only later did they recognize the importance and many had to rush build very large teams very large departments employ many agencies and now they're asking the same question on social media mm. except the development time has shortened dramatically so Point three of adequately resourcing is more pertinent now and the best way to learn is sometimes to look back. There are some large companies today that I can name that had 
a single person running digital, but pretty quickly grew into several hundred, or several hundred thousand pounds, or millions of pounds of budget, I should say. Mm. Social media is just the same thing, and we need to plan for that growth and plan for the personnel to support the business objectives. So are there any kind of acid tests you use to equate, you know, how, how it's kind of a, it's a difficult question, isn't it? How long is a piece of string? How much resource is, is required? And of course, it, it depends on, on the scale, but are there, any, are there any rough rules of thumb that you can, uh, can apply? I don't think there's anything that you can quantify as, a, as an equation to apply, but where a business has gone through step one and step two, and can see the impact of digital and social media across business objectives and departments, they then will have to move quickly to recognize the threat or the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you can look at industries and go, well, what has happened in music? What has happened in publishing? What has happened in media? And what has happened on the high street, unfortunately? Mm -hmm. Had certain businesses been more proactive, they may have built a stronger digital presence quickly or being able to generate more direct and hence more profitable sales and manage their existing customer relationships more effectively. So there is no direct equation, but sometimes you need to ask the what would happen if question. So let's move on to the next the next element, which um, okay. kind of kind of number four on our list, which yeah. was companies not willing to test and learn, because I think that probably ties in quite well with, with point three in terms of resourcing because actually there's a bit of a cycle there isn't there where you get out of the chicken and egg situation where we can't get the resourcing because we're not sure what the impact's going to be and, and so on and so yeah. forth. So the question of test and learn is never before have been given so much opportunity to do things if you want to understand customer feedback. I'm not saying substitute tried and tested to get customer insight. You can get quick insight mm -hmm. online. You can achieve quick feedback through social media and have a two-way conversation. So the insights and the real-time insights you get are powerful. It will enable smart individuals to build quick analysis, multivariate analysis as well, to show the effect organizations now online as well as offline. The need for understanding, evaluating return investment is as potent as ever. I think with digital and social media, that can be done more effectively. And you've just got to be disciplined to do it, test the scenarios, and build the cases quickly. There's more danger from not doing and not testing than doing and testing and learning, failing and succeeding. I think a lot of people fall into this trap where they, they, they rush to, to get a, a social media plan to, together. They do all this activity, but they don't actually learn from it. So essentially they're repeating the same mistakes again and again and, and failing to see the same opportunities that are actually when you go in and analyze the results that you get from it uh, are there again and again you know it's quite 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 clear but they're not going through that iterative cycle of, in, of, of doing observing learning yeah. and improving and I think you said this key word that observing I think that online you can listen with your eyes mm -hmm. and um, the strange analogy there that you can see a lot of what's going on you can obviously build simple ROI financial metrics and analysis but you can also see the impact some of the make better decisions that could just be a starting point. Once you have a strong listening strategy, you can then take social media a step forward to be a true pillar of profitable growth. And so in order to achieve this, do we need lots of complex, expensive tools to, to model and, and analyze, or do you think it can be done effectively with, with, with simple tools for kind of measuring the, 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 the results? I think the tools are there. It's a discipline of using the tools building the assumptions and modeling. And it may just be a simple case of the brave business individual to be articulating the scenarios of high impact, medium impact, low impact, mm -hmm. and these are the factors that feed into it. Weight, applying an appropriate weight to those, and then taking the social media aspects and saying, here are some of the social media metrics. Mm -hmm. Great, we have a million likes. We have 50,000 friends, we have 10,000 retweets. But the most important question you need to ask is, so what? Yeah. It's a bit like, Kieran, if I had a million friends, yeah. and come Christmas, I don't get a present, you have 10 friends, and you get one present. Yeah. Suddenly, your 10 are more effective, have been worked better, have been related to better. Well, I didn't want to rub in, but you know, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm happy with a million friends. I just need to find a way to convert them and give me presents now. Yeah, yeah. So you have to ask that so what question. Yeah. And we need to just run away from the, the vanity metrics of social media yeah. and just ask, so what? Where are the million contributing to? Yeah. How do I get them to contribute to my business objectives? So it's sometimes asking the right question, but most importantly, focus on the so what. And, and that brings us to, to number five. Yeah. Which is... Integration. Yeah, not, not joining it all up, I guess. Yeah, I don't know why I put that as number five, but it's in no particular order. And I think it's the easiest thing forgotten because... Even pre-digital days within marketing, you talk about the marketing mix, and then suddenly the halo effect. Um, if somebody was trying to justify some above-the-line spend, and we're just going to talk communications now, mm -hmm. you suddenly hear, oh, it's worth spending because of the halo effect. Mm. If I spend millions above the line on TV, it will have a halo effect on everything else that I do. Um, it's the magic halo. Um, it sounds almost messiah. <laughs> But, um, and, and, and that's why I guess it has the effect of sometimes loosening the purse strings a, a it little does, bit. It does, it yeah. does. The nice thing to say, it's a halo effect. So yeah. It must be a good thing strategically. Yeah. Um, there are ways to measure this. And I remember um, from early in my career, we, we would do this, particularly in the sort of disciplined brand management role of P, of a P and g And um, you look at it now, social media can amplify and can add to a message, but it must be integrated if we're taking a communications objective. Mm -hmm. If we're taking the product development objective, it needs to be integrated into the product development lifecycle, gaining customer insight, understanding customer or consumer feedback, having that conversation to improve products the way that many apps do mm. by launching different versions quickly, yeah? meeting a customer need and then quickly incorporating customer feedback. Within finance, the way that a piece of financial news communicated, the way that insight can be gained, the way that a market could be read, I think it's unfortunate that financial regulation rules, I think, prevented Twitter from being fully integrated. It may have changed, but being fully integrated into Bloomberg desk. Mm -hmm. and some of the insights that it gives you enables better financial decision making. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole element of integration from communications objective all the way through to some tough operational financial objectives. So social media shouldn't be seen as an add on mm -hmm. or an afterthought. It needs to be at the party and in play with all the other elements of business growth tools, cost efficiency tools, as another weapon in the armory that the effect, effective executive. So I think that would round off the five key areas yeah. where social media can have an impact across organizations and where some organizations do get it wrong but not following any of those five. And I guess you really you've laid the foundations with, with step one, really, haven't you? That, that's that's going to, in terms yeah. of impact across your organisation, if you've assessed that and you worked out what is it that you're trying to, to achieve, not just from you know, a, a, a single viewpoint like marketing or PR, but right across the, the organisation, and then you apply your, your knowledge of digital to, to you know, how you Absolutely. can effectively harness social media to, to achieve that, yeah. you're going to end up with a much more integrated integrated. But the majority of times you'll find it's asking the right question. So the question is not... What should I be saying on Twitter? What should we be doing on LinkedIn? What should we be doing on Pinterest? There's, to achieve this business objective, how can I achieve this business objective with these tools? Do these tools enhance my business objectives? Do they help me build advocacy? Can they strengthen my product development life cycle? And when you step back and ask the actual business question, you'll then consider the effectiveness of the tools and the principles, as opposed to, particularly with social media, the site or the actual destination point. And then you'll focus on, I think the fourth point I mentioned was the whole aspect of um, an impact on all of them. And like I said, some of the best examples do come from the public sector and how it impacts across an organization. Fantastic, well it's been great talking to you. I've really, I, I feel I've learned lots. Well, that's fantastic. And if we want to find out more about the worst kept secret, how do we how do we find you? Where are you online? Yeah, that's easy. I mean, like I said, there are no secrets with us. So you can tweet us at worst kept secret. You can email us. You can find us on our website, www.theworstkeptsecret.com. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. You can poke us. You can like us. You can <laughs> even better. You can come to our office and hug us. So um, yeah, you can find out where we're based. If you go onto our website and we look forward to seeing you and hugging you. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Well, there's going to be a big queue of people waiting outside your office, hopefully, <laughs> once this, <laughs> this episode goes out. So, that's great. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Digital Marketing Podcast, brought to you by Target Internet. If you'd like to get more information on the show, get hold of back issues of this podcast, or get details on any of the links we mentioned, please visit our website at www.targetinternet.com. You can also join our Facebook community. Just go to facebook.com forward slash digital marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, we would love to read your feedback. Please rate us in iTunes or even better, write us a review. Reviews and ratings really help us spread the word about this podcast and it always makes both mine and Daniel's day when we get a new review popping up. So please, if you haven't already, put finger to keyboard next time you're plugged in and tell us what you think. Or if you have any questions, please get in touch. We'd love to help.